Oh, gosh. That's the turkey. Oh, they're hot. I know. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I'd like to welcome everyone to the May 14th, 2020 meeting of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners. Would everyone please rise and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, I'm Jeff Benton, President of the Board. To my right is our Vice President, uh, Gary Merrill. And to his right is Mike Cromer, our Administrator. And to my left is our fellow Commissioner, Barb Lewis. And Sarah DeNova is our clerk today, so we can start. Resolution number 20-405, in the matter of approving the electronic record of permanent proceeding from regular meeting held May 7, 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 20-405. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 20-406. In the matter of approving purchase orders, then announce certificates and payments of warrants and batch numbers CMAPR0513 and memo transfers and batch numbers MTAPR0513. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 20-406. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 20-407, in the matter of naming the plaza between the Delaware County Courthouse in Hayes Building, the John Peterson Memorial Plaza, and authorizing the purchase of two bronze plaques dedicating the John Peterson Memorial Plaza in honor of former County Delaware County Treasurer John Peterson. So moved. Second. Discussion. Anybody wants to make a comment, I'll, I'll add a word or two, I think. Uh, this is something that, I don't know, Commissioner Merrill, I know you were involved yeah, the, in uh, coming yeah, up with this idea. Yeah, I'll, uh, the, uh, uh, we were going to do this in early G early May, and obviously due to circumstances, we're going to have to delay the actual physical dedication, dedication but uh, uh, it's our way of honoring uh, John and um, loss to the county. And uh, um, uh, so there'll be more coming on that when we have a date. I think we're looking at August now. Uh, and obviously everything is subject to whatever circumstances are at that time, but, uh, uh, but this is simply a matter of getting the funding approved and move forward. So. Yeah, I think it's a really nice way to honor John. Yes. Um, and so, but as you mentioned, we can't physically have the ceremony, so, but we can keep the process moving. And well, we, we, couldn't have, we couldn't do it in a form that would really honor him if you've got to honor the spacing, et cetera, et cetera, so. Yeah, it's a great location. Great idea, great location. Mm -hmm. okay, it's, going, and it's going to work out perfectly. It's going to be on the um, the column right there outside the uh, treasurer's office. It'll be on two sides, and uh, one side will have okay. a photo, et cetera, and the other side kind of a bio. So it's it's going to look really, really nice, and it's going to be it's going to be there for the honoring for many, many, many years. So. Yep. Thanks for Very, taking the lead on that. Yeah, yeah. Wish we could do it now, but we'll. We'll wait. Yes. So, okay, let's take a vote. Vote on motion 20-407. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Harrell? Aye. Aye. Resolution number 20-408. In the matter of approving a custom supply agreement between Energy Harbor LLC and the Delaware County Board of Commissioners for Electricity Generation. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, John Melvin, Director of Facilities. Uh, our current contract for electrical generation expires in June, so Saturday NG went out and uh, bid out our demand. Uh, Energy Harbor is the low bidder this time. Um, we're recommending doing a 12-month agreement. We were looking at possible uh, program that CCO was offering with solar energy and obviously the, with the COVID virus that all got put on hold. So um, we're, we're trying to make a decision on that prior to this. But so we, we actually got some really good pricing in for the 12-month uh, extension or you know 12-month agreement. Our current rate is 4.6 cents uh, the new rate for the next 12 months will be 3.74 cents per kilowatt. Really? So, yeah. The current uh, tariff rate is 4.9, so we're underneath the tariff rate anyway. But, yeah, this will be a 3.7 cents. It's my understanding the rates are only guaranteed for 24 hours. So once we approve the resolution, do you have, there, is there a re-ask or? No, we, they did the re-ask last morning. night. I, we okay. got the updated uh, <laughs> contracts. So right after session, we have the ready to form, uh, the forms to be signed, and we'll send them back in. So that is the Very current good. rate. Okay. Good. Good. 
Sounds like a good way to save some dollars. Vote. Vote on motion 20-408. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Resolution number 20-409. On the matter of reappointing members to the Evans Farm New Community Authority Board of Trustees. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Jane Hawes, Director of Communications. Uh, we have before you a resolution uh, with Evans Farm New Community Authority. Uh, current members, uh, citizen members, uh, Sagey Keele and Pat Blaney have agreed uh, their interest in being reappointed, and we recommend their approval. I just want to comment. Pat Blaney. Uh, is always there when the county needs oh him or something. He's and, on so uh, many boards. And uh, I just feel it's deserve a special kudos. And of course, Cy, Cy works for the county. I'm not trying to exclude him, but Pat is a non-employee. He really, he's always there when we need him. Volunteer in so many different ways to help, so yeah. Ah, boy, yes, they're both excellent. So <laughs> really glad they'll do it again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dean, you just look funny with it. Asking. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very fashionable, don't you? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, it's a new earring. It is. Style. <laughs> earring. Yeah. Your new earring. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll take a vote. Vote on motion 20 409. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. No. Resolution number 20-410, in the matter of approving sanitary sewer subdividers agreement for Evans Farm Section 2, Phase A, Part 2.2. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Tiffany Mag, Director of Environmental Services. So this is the next phase of Evans Farm. Uh, there are 21 lots in this phase, and it's just on the northwest side of where the Parade of Homes lots were. Okay. Um, it's okay. on Hickory Drive and Evans Farm Drive West. Okay. All right. Vote. Vote on motion 20-410. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 20-411. In the matter of selecting and ranking the three most qualified progressive design build teams for the Olentangy Environmental Control Center, Headworks and Aeration Project for Delaware County, Ohio. So moved. Second. Discussion. So this is the project that we put a uh, request for qualifications out in, uh, I believe it was late February, and we've just now received those packages back. And we're going to go ahead and shortlist all three of the teams that submitted. It was uh, Kokosing, Shook, and Peterson. Um, all three uh, submitted very good packages, you know, very uh, qualified to perform the project. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to be submitting to them a uh, request for proposals. At that point, they will put, a, put together a full-blown proposal. Um, that's where they'll be spending the majority of their time to try to win this project, um, and that's going to be due back to us in July. So in July, I'll be back in here to talk about which team we would like to go forward with on the project. Okay. This is a big deal. Oh, yeah. This is a it major, is. major <laughs> capital. In many ways. Yeah, yeah. It is, yes. It's a, it's a, a big project, um, very needed project, um, and obviously we'll continue to monitor our financial situation as we move forward with this project. All right. All right. Who's on the review committee to review the um, It's Mike, myself, um, Eric McPeak, uh, Jeff Hall, and Brad Stanton. Okay. All right. Vote. Vote on motion 20-411. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Tiffany? Thanks, Tiffany. Resolution number 20-412, in the matter of approving supplemental corporations for the Emergency Medical Services Department. So move. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff Fischel, Director of EMS, Delaware County. Uh, I've met with each of you, you to discuss the Requested yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> supplemental. Sure we can hear you, okay. And uh, I'm just here to see if there's any uh, follow-up uh, questions or conversation to be had about the uh, supplemental. Yeah, I know you. You and I had extended conversation about this yesterday, and appreciate that. So you answered my questions. Okay. And he and I spoke this morning, and uh, obviously some of these will be reimbursable. And uh, yeah. 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 We talked yesterday too. Yeah. yeah so you did a good job of answering questions and getting us prepared. So I think we're ready to take a vote. All right. Thank you. Vote on motion 20-412. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Resolution Thanks number 20-413. So. In the matter of appointing a member to the countywide multipurpose trail committee. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioner. Zach Daly, Economic Development, representing the 
uh, Delaware County Trails Commission Committee today, excuse me. Um, back in March, if you remember, in the before times, I was here um, discussing some administrative changes that we might, um, that the board might want to consider in terms of appointing myself to the commission and, or committee, I'm so sorry, and uh, letting them um, vote their own officers in as um, currently Jenna Gehring is the named um, chair and she's no longer with us. So that's just this um, resolution here before you. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Yeah, congratulations. I think you'll do a nice job and trail committee is very important and they've got a lot going on. So, so that's good. Um, let's take a vote. Vote on motion 20-413. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Next, we have an update from Director Bob Lamb. One more. <laughs> Bob Lamb, Economic Development Director for Delaware County. Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to address you. Uh, I'm on here to discuss two different items. One, a quick update revolving the Economic Development Business Assistance uh, Program. Um, also, the advisory team that was put together for the economic recovery of Delaware County by the commissioners. We have been consistently meeting with that group. They have moved forward to multiple different plans that have received assist that are currently helping our business community. The Small Business Assistance Program um, is still very active. We are getting requests from businesses for assistance on professional service side. Just a few more even this week came in. So we're very glad that we were able to put that in place um, to help businesses secure the financial and legal services as well as SBA assistance uh, that they need. A lot of the items that we're now getting for assistance relate more to HR and employee type items and how do you bring people back and what are the requirements associated with that. We also just yesterday held a liability webinar. Um, we had over 20 companies participate in that webinar. It was very well received and appreciated that liability going to what are the legal concerns that a business needs to be considering as they choose to open back up. Um, so. We have additional webinars, two more coming up over the next few days. Again, doing everything we can to put relevant information out there to assist our business community. We're also doing a shop local program that continues to move forward. The radio ads will begin shortly. Um, we are also releasing videos on Facebook and other um, social media settings that will highlight these different safety measures that businesses are undertaking to open up for their commit uh, for their customers again just trying to build confidence within that system to get people back into our small businesses so that we can see this downturn turn around as quickly as possible for our residents the additional item uh, is before you today and i don't know if you want me to go right into that just one question on the webinars. Uh, who's putting those on? Is that? Dan? We are putting them on. Um, okay. It's a joint effort. Uh, some we are solely uh, creating and putting on with many of our professional service providers in the county or who are partnered with us. Others we are working jointly with some individuals such as Columbus State worked with us on a uh, webinar oriented towards manufacturing. Um, so that was a Columbus State oriented webinar that they're doing in multiple counties to provide information to the manufacturers in those counties. Um, so it's a variety of different approaches that we're taking. Um, we've worked with one Columbus and others as well, just again, doing everything we can to push out information and to let people know what is going on out there and the best avenues to find the information they need. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, have a, I have a comment. I didn't intend to make it down, but it seems like it's a good time as any. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all the leadership you provided. We're talking about economic development. Now we're talking about economic survival in some cases. So you're kind of changed, but still the same thing. And uh, you provided outstanding leadership. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Um, and 
I would just want to thank the individuals on the task force. We have several of them here today. Steve Cuckler, Don Ranke, as well as Pat Tiberi and many others, Rick Carfagna, have really stepped forward and dedicated their time on these different programs, whether it's providing money to United Way, which I would thank you commissioners for really stepping up and taking a leadership role in that area. Um, I can tell you uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to be on a webinar CCAO is putting on, and the reason why we were selected is because of the property tax um, extension, the uh, United Way. These are all items that many communities have not undertaken and they want to highlight the great work that you've led the efforts on getting in place to help our business community and our residents. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you, um, you'd mentioned one, one thing that I think is going to be extremely important and I've been working with the legislature and others, uh, uh, the associations, et cetera, and that is liability protection. Um, I know you did a webinar on that. Um, there are various proposals at the State House now to, to deal with that. And I think there's some federal proposals. Correct. Um, to do that. So maybe if you could just chat about that for a minute, because again, if, if, if we come through this yeah. and then unending harassment type litigation happens, then it's just going to be awful, you know, for the businesses who are already suffering to, to have to deal with that, business associations, hospitals, et cetera. County governments, city governments. Yeah, uh, no, you're exactly right. And that's one of the biggest questions we're hearing from businesses, um, both for their employee side, but also for their customers. If an individual who's been home for two weeks um, decides to leave the house and stops at two or three locations, and those locations especially are tied to larger corporations, and then that individual gets home and is, begins to get sick over the next few days and hasn't gone anywhere, is that person able to turn around and try to claim some kind of damage against those larger entities? And if so, what does that look like? How is it determined? Um, all of those questions are of significant concern, both to our larger employers and larger businesses in the country, but also to our small businesses. And so there are efforts at the state level, both in the House and the Senate, to pass legislation that would try to address that. There are also, as you mentioned, federal efforts currently going forward to address it on a larger scale. Um, I think it's a critical item that we need to be addressing for our businesses. One of the greatest concerns in any business is the unknown. Um, and that is a major unknown right now. So any steps that we can take as a state or as a nation to address those concerns, I think will be a huge step forward in positioning our businesses to reopen and to know that they can proceed forward with some confidence that they will not find themselves buried in lawsuit after lawsuit. Yep. Yeah. yeah, good Good to hear that. And thank you for your effort on that. And if everyone could keep, keep the legislature focused on that and try to get as positive legislation passed as we can. It and really I know help. Pat Tiberi through the business roundtable is working very hard on that endeavor and trying to clarify that because many of his members have raised significant concerns. And there's probably more success at the state level than there will be at the federal level because this thing unfortunately gets political. Oh, it does. And uh, it seems obvious to us, but uh, it is unfortunate that these things have a way of getting a life of their own. So. I, I know Senator McConnell at, uh, at the federal level, though, has said that this is a red line for his caucus. And uh, there's disagreement among with, with uh, Representative Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi, who has not backed liability legislation. But that is, that is so, it's so vital. It really is. Oh, yeah. Yep. OK. You want to talk revolving loan fund? Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to be here today to discuss this item. A lot of work has happened over the last few weeks to move this item forward. Um, we are currently proposing the, a resolution that would authorize us to move forward with the establishment of the revolving loan fund uh, to authorize the administrator to begin that paperwork and final document preparation to move that forward to submit a application to Jobs Ohio um, requesting them to do a matching grant fund for that revolving loan fund. Further, the request is for the commissioners to look at and the county officials looking at putting $2.5 million into the revolving loan fund. We are currently working with Orange Liberty, 
City of Powell, City of Delaware on potential funding for that. I will tell you Orange and Liberty have taken very proactive steps and are looking to hold a meeting tonight to vote on if they are willing to provide financial support to that loan fund. Um, I'm incredibly excited to tell you that this morning the Delaware County Finance Authority voted to support the revolving loan fund by allocating $250,000 that fund contingent upon the legal documents being finalized with all the other parties. Um, so we are making great progress. I don't think a year or two ago we would have been in this position. This is really a community effort of individuals coming together to move this forward. Um, what I would especially like to say right now is thanks to Don Ranke. Don has really led the efforts in this regard, has really been the architect of putting together the partnerships that are moving this forward. And so he's actually gonna come up and uh, talk to this item because of what the crucial role that he has played in moving this forward. Good morning, commissioners, uh, Don Ranke. Morning. Um, and thank you for your kind comments, but you know, it's been a real team effort. Um, I want to start off by um, stating, let's, as I go through a few words, I would like you to um, keep in the back of your mind or forefront of your mind, you know, the theme of building relationships and trust, building relationships and trust. This is what we know uh, today. Um, Thanks to your efforts, Delaware County is one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Ohio. Uh, Delaware County is projected to remain the fastest growing uh, county and will add approximately another 100,000 residents over the next 25 years. Uh, thanks to your efforts, Delaware County is one of the uh, 10 most livable counties in the United States. Our school system uh, is, in, is in the top 10. Um, Olin Tangy school system has played a big role in that. Um, downtown Delaware is one of the best places to live in the United States. Uh, the Delaware uh, County Economic Development Department um, has developed smart development protocols. Um, and, you know, thanks to Bob uh, Lamb's uh, foresight and, and leadership, and um, we want to build on that. You know, obviously over the next five years. And the results over the last five years have been extraordinary. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Small business is the backbone of the Delaware County economy, simply stated. The impact of uh, the coronavirus, uh, you know, in December 2019, you know, the unemployment rate here in Delaware County was 2.8. Now, well, about 30 days ago, um, it, it was 9.3. There's really concern that it may grow from the 9.3. 40% of the small businesses um, have done furloughs and 54% layoffs. And 20% of the companies um, have stopped making payments on loans. 25% of the businesses um, that, that the Economic Development Department has uh, surveyed, 25% are, are very concerned about reopening and restarting. Um, we're concerned that 25% of the businesses on top of that currently will not be able to reopen. So focusing on building relationships, the success of the revolving loan fund is because of the relationships and trust that this county commission, um, together with, with the county administrator, uh, the economic development department, the Delaware County Finance Authority, and um, members like uh, Chairman Steve Cuckler um, have built with the small business uh, businesses over the last five years. These relationships now lead uh, the way in the most comprehensive potential revolving loan fund in the state of Ohio and maybe one of the most comprehensible revolving loan funds in the United States in regards to counties. And simply put, the, uh, the, 
this revolving loan fund will significantly help restart small businesses. You know, our partners, you know, from the very um, get-go, um, Orange Township has played a major role. Ryan Rivers has uh, been a great leader in regards to trying to, you know, put this all together. You know, Shira Icorn, who's the president of Liberty Township Trustees, she's been on board from the very beginning. Uh, I really appreciate her leadership. It's just really incredible. She took on, um, you know, talking to the city of Powell to get them uh, into the program, and she single-handedly got that done. Um, we have, um, in, 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 you know, we've had really good conversations with Adam White, who's now the new city manager in Powell. And of course, you know, uh, I can't ever, you know, say enough about the Delaware County Finance Authority. I mean, the leadership there, you know, I'm honored to have been able to serve four years and three as, as their treasurer. Um, the leadership there in building relationships together with the commissioners in the economic development department has had significant, um, significant successes. And of course now we're very concerned about how we go forward. Um, the loan committee uh, will have seven seats. Um, I think this morning you, know, you may appoint three of those seats. Um, Hopefully, uh, after tonight's special meetings, you know, Ryan Rivers will uh, be added and uh, Shira Icorn will be added. And obviously, the Delaware County Finance Authority, because of their actions this morning, um, will have a seat. That leaves uh, one seat left. You know, obviously, Mr. Fromer and Director Lamb and myself are, are on it. Um, so it just, it, it leaves one seat, but it's a great, you know, it's a great board. Um, County Administrator uh, Fromer has been very successful uh, in negotiating um, a banking lending agreement uh, that would process these loans, underwrite these loans uh, with uh, Buckeye State uh, Bank and their CEO, Sean uh, Keller. I mean, I can't understate uh, how you know, grateful that I am to you know, Sean Keller and Buckeye State Bank because they've come forward in a big way and have committed to being, you know, the heart and soul of this community lending program, you know, for our small businesses. You know, the terms of the agreement, um, the maximum loan, 25000 uh, which could be uh, used for up to four months of rent, mortgage payments, and utilities. Um, the, the loan term would be up to five years. It would be three to five years, but up to five years with a maximum interest rate of uh, 4%. It could flow between three and four, not flow, but it could be fixed between three and 4%. You know, and the biggest, um, you know, I, I, I think the biggest item is no payments for the first six months. I think that's big. Uh, our initial um, estimates look like we would be able to um, provide between 200 and 220 loans um, to small business uh, businesses around the county with what we think will end up being you know, close to a $5 million fund. The actual uh, loan uh, fund will depend obviously on the matching grant from Jobs Ohio. That application is being you know, submitted late Friday or first thing um, Monday. You know, Pat T. Berry's name's been brought up several times um, today. Uh, Pat, a few days ago, uh, contacted Bob and asked Bob to get him a copy of the application. And uh, Pat had his team review the application. And Pat called me personally and said that his team was extremely impressed with the application and thought it would be well received by uh, Jobs Ohio. And Pat has been. Um, yeah, he's just been so supportive. Uh, Troy Bald, Congressman Troy Balderson has been very supportive. His, uh, he's had two reps uh, at every meeting. Pat Tiberi has been on all the phone, you know, the, the, the phone calls. Um, but Troy Balderson's had two of his folks and, and himself on, on, on the phone calls. Obviously, Rick Carfagna has made a, you know, been a major uh, help. I mean, he's 
actually uh, been very helpful with, with Bob in putting the um, application together. Uh, Representative Chris Jordan, um, obviously Chairman and Attorney uh, Steve Cuckler. Steve has uh, been very helpful and, and I really appreciate our friendship it's been a good one, and um, and he's really got a you know he's really been very supportive, and he's already provided a letter. Um, the Delaware County Clerk of Courts, Natalie Frabel. Obviously, I can't begin to express our thanks to her. I just can't. Uh, what an incredible leadership role she's played in this. You know, um, Brian Rivers and Shira Icorn. Um, I got a call yesterday from Prosecutor Melissa Schiffel, fully in support and, and is writing a great letter. We've already received a letter of support from Sheriff Russ Martin. Obviously, um, you know, I, I think you all know how highly I think of uh, Bill Bishop, you know, our chairman of the Delaware County Finance Authority. Um, he's been a real leader. Adam White, the Val City Council. Andrew King, who's now the new administrator in um, Orange Township, Rick Carr, who's the new finance director yeah, for um, Liberty Township, um, Mark Rafe, who's the Old Tangy School Superintendent, Melissa Jordan, who's our um, um, recorder, and uh, has also been very helpful. You know, Bob has prepared, and so I wanted you to know the strong support that we've had. You know, uh, Director Lamb has prepared what I call the Ask Applications to Job Ohio. Um, where Delaware County will be requesting $2.5 million uh, to match the funds that we've already um, potentially committed here um, that should be committed by Friday. Both Orange Township and Liberty Township have called for special meetings this evening and I plan to attend those. Um, and they will be considering $250,000 each to contribute to this, this fund. I just think, think that speaks loudly of you know, the relationships that have been built and the trust that has been built. Um, the city of Powell, you know, in a conversation I had with their city manager yesterday, they are also working diligently to uh, have a special meeting and they are um, very excited about the opportunity to uh, partner in this. You know, um, on behalf of the uh, Revolving Loan uh, Committee, um, and Bob and, and, and Mike and uh, Trustee Rivers and Trustee Icorn um, and the Delaware County uh, Economic Staff and Bob, you know, we humbly and respectfully request the county commissioners uh, vote unanimously to pass this resolution this morning, allowing the $2.5 million um, to be the first uh, incredible action, you know, for the revolving loan fund, authorizing County Administrator Mike Fromer to execute the uh, banking agreement with Buckeye State Bank uh, and naming members to the revolving loan fund. You know, it's a great day for the small businesses here in Delaware County. And, you know, I congratulate the commissioners for their foresight um, and their incredible leadership uh, in reaching out and doing everything they can to put the small businesses, which have been the backbone, giving them a fighting chance, you know, moving forward. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Um, I think we do need to read the resolution though, right? We'll read the resolution and then we'll uh, get into some additional discussion questions. Resolution number 20-414. In the matter of establishing, establishing a Delaware County Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund, committing funds to the RLF, des designating a committee to provide oversight and administration R of the RLF, authorizing submission of an application to Jobs Ohio, and authorizing the county administrator and county economic development director to execute any and all documents necessary for the creation and operation of the RLF. So moved. Second. All right, now we'll have discussion, further discussion. Um, Bob Lamb, Economic Development Director. <laughs> Any other comments before we take questions, comments? Commissioner Merrill, Commissioner Lewis. I just, uh, I, I really applaud everyone's uh, creativity and uh, the time 
thank you so much for the time and the expertise that you have all put into this. So many, so many different moving parts, and then reaching out to to the townships and and the other office holders it has has in the cooperation and collaboration has has really been outstanding. So I thank everyone for their for their efforts. I definitely support this. I, I, I'm, I'm so pleased that this, and, and we're moving this as quickly as possible because businesses need the money now and the small businesses are the backbone of our county's economic development engine. So uh, just thank you for all your help and I'm very happy to support it. Commissioner Rue? Um, yeah, I have a couple of comments, but that doesn't surprise you, does it? <laughs> the, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how we got here. Um, we, we as commissioners have a responsibility to the fiscal health of this county, and this fiscal health of this county is, uh, we find ourselves in a unique situation that is going to be uh, a, a challenge, for lack of a better word. And uh, so as I was approached four or five weeks ago, whenever we first, the conversations began, um, you, you start thinking about how do we fulfill that responsibility, and. Uh, obviously, I had questions, and um, and Bob Lamb and Mike Fromer and Don Ranke, uh, I have answered my questions and provided me a lot of information that has been very helpful as we uh, think about how we do this. But I had some basic questions: um, How do we protect the interest in the equity of the Delaware County taxpayers? That was one of the questions that was asked. I feel that question has been answered in a positive way, and and they are going to be protected. Uh, my support was dependent upon taxpayers in our county getting a fair return on their investments. I believe we accomplished that as we did our research and our work. How do we make sure we put these uh, loans in the hands of those businesses that have a reasonable chance for success? The goal is to make sure we, we put the money where we get the most impact and have the best result. And, um, and the, I feel very comfortable that the plan as described is going to accomplish that. And how, how will this program be professionally managed? Uh, because if it's not managed well, and I know that was a concern shared by others. Uh, one of them smiling at me. And uh, that is very important. And, and all, those are the four elements that I uh, had to come to grips with before I could support it. And you, plural, you did that. And, uh, and we are in a position right now to do something that I think is going to be, a, we used the word, I think, last week, template or a model for other counties. I think we've, we, we should be very proud of that. And uh, our taxpayers in this county, the small business community who will have the opportunity to benefit from this program uh, will be equally proud of it as we get into it. Um, uh, and how these small businesses, they've been under stress for the last six weeks, two months. Some revenue has gone to zero. Some may, because they're able to do some marginal business, maybe have some fraction of what the business they had before, but they have been stressed with their cash flow. They still have expenses, utilities, and all the other expenses that uh, they have to deal with as small business people. and people who I applaud every day because of, of what they, they make this county what it is and they and the hiring that they do and uh, uh, this is an opportunity to help some of those businesses and I think that's very very important and um, as we uh, uh, again my questions and concerns have been addressed I'm excited to support this resolution and um, I think uh, we're all going to be very pleased as we look back at the success. Um, in closing, I'd just like to make one statement. The, uh, there's a large number of businesses that are going to potentially close their doors and are going to be reopened. This program is going to make it possible to keep some of those businesses in business. And uh, whether we're talking about the PAL area, we're talking about the Westerville area, we're talking about the Sunbury area, we're talking about the Polaris area, or Delaware City. And Delaware City is just right down the street here. Delaware City has done an outstanding job with Main Street in building a very active community. 
And that's going to be impacted by this issue. I, I, don't, I can't predict who may or may not open or close, but there will be some challenges. And uh, the opportunity to put a program like this together will help keep some of them, or all of them in business, if we want to be optimistic, is helpful. And if you take the $25,000 and you divide it by the five million, that's roughly 200 businesses, if they all got the max, that are going to be able to have an opportunity because of the short-term funds. And uh, I think we should all be very excited, very proud of that. And I commend Orange and Powell and uh, Liberty and Delaware City and the Finance Authority, everyone who stepped up and the state and of course the county for the role we're playing in this. I, and you, all members of this committee, for all the work you've done and the creativity you've put into this. This program is going to work because of the time that's been invested over the last four to six weeks. And thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, the, most everything's been said that I wanted to say, um, but uh, early on I expressed my concerns about the county becoming a bank, um, having been a banker for 30 years and, and recognizing just how complex and uh, risk, uh, risk intense uh, running a bank is, uh, there's a reason that there are no $5 million banks anymore. Just, just can't afford the infrastructure and, and run a $5 million bank if, if effectively. So uh, thanks to Mr. Ranke, uh, Bob, Mike, uh, Steve, Bill Bishop, everybody getting together, came up with a solution to uh, partner with a bank who has the infrastructure expertise, risk management tools to uh, properly manage a program like this. And I want to thank Sean Kelly, who I think is a resident of Powell, if, if I understand. Thank him for and his team for working on this and figuring out a way to get this done. Um, but uh, one one thing to, that I'd like to just comment on is to put this thing together in this condensed a time frame is truly remarkable. Uh, this is a complex structure, complex process, and to get it done so quickly, which it needed to be done. I mean, it, to be effective, it has to be. It had to be done quickly, and to get it get it to this point where we're ready to apply to Jobs Ohio for a grant and, and uh, that'll be the cornerstone of, of making this thing work. Uh, to put this structure together with so many different ideas uh, to vet them and, and work with a bank to get it, get it ready is, is, very, is truly remarkable. Um, the, and this is truly a unique structure you know, in, in the state, you know, maybe the region, maybe this, the country, um, to put this program together with this structure to really help our businesses, um, it was just huge. Um, clearly, uh, I want to, again, compliment uh, the folks who are participating, Liberty Orange, Delaware City Powell, um, the Finance Authority, Bill, Bish Bill Bishop's leadership's been outstanding. Um, and now we're ready to talk, finalize things with the, D the, the Jobs Ohio folks who will make this happen, hopefully. and, and um, Again, it's just been remarkable to see this come to fruition in such a short time frame with such a positive structure that will save a lot of businesses, I'm convinced, and, uh, and protect the taxpayers, you know, which is, is vital as well. So, so again, very, very good. Congratulations. I know we're not over the finish line yet, but um, it, you know, we're, we're really getting there, and I think we've got the right approach and the right backers. You know, again, I want to thank uh, Clerk Fravel for her yes, you know, stepping up. Yeah. Just that was yeah. most definitely. I mean, that is just huge. You know, um, she had some funds in the title division that, you know, weren't fully invested in, in other things, and this is a great way to invest in the community. Um, so I want to thank her publicly as well. Representative uh, Congressman Balderson, Pat Tiberi, Representative Carfania, uh, 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 Trustee Icorn, Trustee uh, Rivers. I mean, it, there are just so many people that, make, that made this happen. So again, thank you all, um, and congratulations on putting the structure together. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get the app into the Jobs Ohio. We'll get that. Um, when do you expect to hear back on that? I know you've been talking to them all along. We're hoping to have a phone call Monday um, if we're able to get that document in Friday. As Don mentioned, Friday or Monday morning is when the submittal is be. We are planning on a Friday morning submittal, though, right now. Okay. Yeah, any, any timeline on when they would make their decision? 
We're asking for a very quick turnaround time. Um, we're going to kind of have that conversation on Monday, but I'm hoping three to four days. Okay, great. I'd just like to add, because I feel a little guilty, I didn't mention Natalie by name, and because uh, it was my intent. Uh, she has a fund because of the title work they do, and uh, a fund that she felt could be better utilized, and, uh, and she's willing to put uh, a good portion of that fund to work for the benefit of the businesses in our county. And uh, I can't say enough how much this commissioner, and I believe all of us, based on your comments, we really appreciate her stepping up and this committee and ultimately the small business community. Uh, so uh, just thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? I think we're ready to take a vote. Vote on motion 20-414. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Don. Steve. Yes. Thank you, guys. You guys did all the hard work. Yes, yeah, that's right. I think I've been there all along in the process. <laughs> we have. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> To the I think we can yeah, open our hearing, which we're going to okay. then continue. Yes. Resolution number 20-415, public hearing for consideration of the Zerby O'Keefe number 265 drainage improvement petition filed by Gary Graham and Linda Graham and others. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 20-415. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 20-416, in the matter of continuing the public hearing to address the survey of Keith number 265, Watershed Drainage Improvement Petition Project to Thursday, October 1st, 2020 at 10 a.m. So moved. Second. Discussion. Just a comment that the reason we're doing this is because of the virus and, uh, uh, and uh, it would not have been appropriate to have had the hearing without the ability for uh, the public to come and comment. So. Yeah, and then these things, unfortunately, are piling up. We have a number of these that we've had to postpone and some petitions in process that have been submitted for consideration. Um, and, and we feel bad, but, you know, we can only, can't do hearings, and therefore we have to continue these, and, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. And yeah, they're back up pretty bang, bang. We're going to have them back to back to back. Right? Yeah, yeah, we've got several of them scheduled already and probably going to have more. Right, right, yep. So again, we apologize that we can't get these done sooner, but there is a process we have to go through and we can't do that process until we can have larger groups gather. So um, for now, we'll have to continue them. So we'll take a vote. Vote on motion 20-416. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 20-417. Resolution of necessity for the purchase of a moving vehicle for the use of the Delaware County Sheriff's Office or its employees. So move. Second. Discussion. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Mike Fromer, uh, County Administrator. I uh, told the Sheriff's Office I would handle this one session so they could be out doing what they need to be doing uh, during this time. Uh, this is a, a new vehicle for the Drug Task Force um, to be purchased. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 20-417. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Administrator reports. Good morning, Commissioners. Mike Fromer, County Administrator. Um, just to update you, we've been, uh, you know, this is our uh, second week of operation after the stay-at-home order was revised. And uh, it seems like, uh, you know, we're gradually uh, accomplishing what we wanted to, to reopen. Um, some of our buildings to appointments and other things. As you can see, some of our departments are extremely busy. Um, economic development is really busy right now. Um, you know, I know we spent a lot of time earlier, uh, uh, Don and Bob worked tirelessly over um, the, the last couple weeks. Um, you know, I, I, I think we were talking to each other more than we were probably talking to our spouses at, at, at different times of night and things like that. Um, the, uh, Don said something really important about the uh, small business being the lifeline of the lifeblood of the community. Uh, my first uh, four or five years with the county, I spent a lot of time working with the development community, um, which is a very important part of the county, but it's, uh, uh, it's been great over the last couple of weeks, unfortunate circumstances, to engage with the, the existing business community and 
Um, you know, and I think it's good, you know, the, the business retention, I, I think our, our business retention and big biz, business uh, assistance programs are taking a huge bump up right now and hopefully that will continue in the future. I think that's been an area that uh, they brought on Kelsey to kind of fortify and, and bump that up and this is going to jump start that. So um, that's all I have for update. So. Okay, Commissioner Merrill. Uh, you know, other than all the uh, conference calls that we find ourselves involved in, um, I don't think I really have anything to add. Uh, it's an exciting day. I, I'm very excited about this project. I, uh, I think it shows the creativity that this county tries uh, to put into these kinds of things, the unexpected in this case. Uh, so with that, I have no other comments. Okay. Mr. Lewis? Other than conference calls, yeah, you're right, <laughs> um, <laughs> which I won't calls. go into. Uh, one thing that Sean Miller, uh, our EMA director, wanted me to mention that he was giving a report the other day. He forgot to, uh, to thank uh, John Melvin and our facilities department because he said they, they have just, he said, to quote Sean, they have done a terrific job and uh, they for everything from the sneeze guards, maybe it means masks, I'm not sure. <laughs> what are those? Yeah, we got one out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. They're, they're oh, gotcha. Now. They're the plexiglass Great. stuff. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, masks, um, sanitizer pumps, um, and uh, he said they they have just been they have been remarkable once again, another department really in another part of our county. Employees just stepping up and, and doing a wonderful job. And uh, let's see, he said that uh, the PPEs are doing well, that um, they are personal protective equipment, um, and he's going to uh, through EMA try and get them out to people before they're even requested to anticipate the needs and of course safety forces um, need them our uh, our uh, our various assisted living homes and where people are most at risk so they're busy working away that's it Okay, we've covered a number of the things I was going to mention, um, but I'll, there's a few others I just wanted to touch on. Uh, Senate Bill 310 is is in the process of, of in, is in the legislative process, and that is um, passing through some of the CARES Act money to local governments to reimburse them for direct costs of uh, the COVID-19 work. Um, so that is uh, another avenue that we can recover our uh, costs for that uh, of, of this. The county can recover its costs as well as other local jurisdictions. So I would urge folks to get engaged in that process that, that could help uh, reimburse for some of those expenses. Um, liability protection we talked about. MORPC Executive Committee, we had that call last Thursday and that went okay. Um, MORPC's um, working, you know, they're impacted like everybody. They did get a PPP loan. Um, they're doing some projections to find out just how, how they're going to go forward uh, because their revenue streams are not materializing as, as most aren't. So they're, they're working on that. Uh, uh, Montrose Group is hosting a webinar tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock on how businesses can restart, um, you know, when they reopen. So I'm going to listen to that. I'd be interested in see what they have to say. They're experts in that. Um, State capital budget, from everything I'm hearing from numerous sources, is very doubtful that that will even occur at all this year, much less even at a reduced rate, obviously with the state tax revenues going down significantly. I think um, that's a surprise. You know? Yeah, I don't think anybody would be surprised by that, but it's, it, it, it's, it's very doubtful at this point that there will be any state capital budget this cycle. Um, then one other thing, in the paper yesterday, this, uh, there's a company called Tracks Management Services which is a uh, company that's based in the uh, Delaware Entrepreneur Center on uh, Westlands campus. Um, and they are, they've been approved for their test kits for testing COVID-19. And they've got a, 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 a 
they've got a business that they've started and they're based in the OU Entrepreneur Center and they've been approved for the for an advanced test. It's it's a very sophisticated test. Wow. And it's great, you know, it just says a lot of things. First of all, they're a local company and they're doing some neat things and they're responding to it. Um, they're based in the Entrepreneur Center, Jeez. which is exactly what we're trying to accomplish with the Entrepreneur Center yeah. is get these startup companies going, uh, incubated. And uh, so it's just really neat. Uh, congratulations to them and all those who participate in uh, getting the Entrepreneur Center going. We do have need for executive session, several, I think, a couple topics anyway. I think we want to add um, uh, acquisition, yeah, acquisition to sale property. Okay. Resolution number 20-418, in the matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of the sale of property at competitive bidding for pendant, pending or imminent litigation. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote? Vote on motion 20-418. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Aye. Okay, we are now in executive session. Zero dash four one nine in the matter of a dream out of the executive session. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion two zero dash four one nine. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Farrell. Aye. Do you have an item for other business this morning? Resolution number two zero dash four two zero. In the matter of approving a property redevelopment contract by and between the Delaware, sorry, the Board of County Commissioners of Delaware County, Ohio and Delaware County Finance Authority for the property located at or near the northeast corner of Columbus Pike in Orange Road, located in Orange Township, Delaware County, Ohio. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Mike Fromer, County Administrator. Uh, presenting to you the uh, for approval the contract between the County Commissioners and the uh, Finance Authority. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I think we're, we've been briefed and, and want to go ahead with the vote? Vote on motion 20-420. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Okay, I think that is it. No other business? We, we are adjourned. You were hesitant. <laughs> well, Sarah was ready to go.